guys how you guys doing this is Keon Corner, also known as Mr. Finance I'm here to share with you um, some finance one-on-one -on -one, right uh, let me come here give me a second let me tag the crew right I call it the money crew um, give me a second let me tag up the money crew right we got to get the money crew involved let the money crew know what's going on all right um one of the things that i'm going to share today you know what's going on carlos all right so today i'm excited to share with you guys about how to pretty much build a basic financial foundation and pretty much understand some of the, the steps you need to take in order to do that right and i think that's so important for us to learn um like i said finance 101 now the way we do it is such a simple way you know finance is not complicated finance is not hard to learn it is really simple it's just that we got to take the time to understand so one of the things that we're going to be using today is our saving the future book which pretty much breaks, breaks down some of the basic principles of how to build a financial foundation which is also known as finance 101 now in this book, it's going to share with you simplicity of how you could understand finance and how you could really learn. It's pretty much some of the, what people say complicated about finance, which is actually easy. And I'm going to show you how simple it is to understand finance because finance is not hard. Finance is not hard to understand. You just got to know the concepts. Once you understand the concepts, you will know what solutions you want for you and your family. So just a little background about myself for those that don't know who I am. Um, like I said, my name is Keon Corniff. I've been, um, you know, I'm actually 31 years old. Uh, before this, I used to work three jobs. Um, I used to work from 3.45 in the morning to 11.30 at night. Did that for about five years until I learned about the campaign. And, you know, the things that motivated me to get started was my kids and my mom. You know, I want to be in a position where I could actually understand how to make sure that they see their future is secure. And I did that through the campaign by learning about finance. Let me tell you something. Think about this. All right. I just want you to think about this. Imagine you went to school, right? You went to school to go get good grades. And those good grades got you in college. And then you got into college and you finished college with whatever degree you went for. You got a good job. That good job would then in return, you working there, give you what's called paycheck, which is money. So if the ultimate goal while you're going to a good school and getting the good grades and all of these things is to ultimately get the money, then you got to start learning about money because the money is the end game, right? What's going on, Johnny? So if we don't understand finance, then how can we win the money game, right? You understand how they got the good grades. You understand how to... To, to get into the college. You understand how to finish college and got the job. Now you got the money and you don't understand how to, to manage it, right? It's almost like a catch 22 in a sense. So one of the things that I just want to give you even a little bit of background about who we are as a company, you know, our parent company is called Aegon, A-E-G-O-N. They've been around since 1844. And one of the things that Aegon want to do when they wanted to expand into North America, so they bought a company called Transamerica, which serve as our financial department today. And then they also bought a company called World Financial Group, which is a marketing and distribution side of the company. And this is where we have actually affiliation and access to over 70 different financial companies, companies that you know of. Now, the big thing that you gotta realize that the division that we're a part of is called the World System Builders. And this is the educational department. This is where we are, we've launched our national campaign for financial literacy. And that's one of the biggest focus that we focus on now. And the reason why we're doing this is because of, well, three major concerns that we know you and your families are facing. Number one, families are facing what we call the retirement crisis, where a lot of people can't stay retired. And then we have what's called the education crisis, where a lot of people are finishing school with a lot of debt. And then we have a spending crisis, and it really starts with a country where our country's national debt is over 20 plus trillion dollars which is a burden of over 50 plus thousand dollars per citizen. That's something that you must know and understand so that way you can learn how to win the money again. So what I'm going to do is share with you some concepts today, right? So if you're taking notes, you definitely want to take notes on this. I'm going to share with you some concepts on what is it that you need to know 
when it comes to building your uh, financial foundation. But pretty much, you're also gonna learn a little bit about um, my ca our campaign as well. Why is this national financial literacy campaign is so important for you, your community, your friends, your family, right? So, on page one, I'm gonna tell you about why we launched our campaign, right? What kind of helped us to launch this campaign? Now, it was according to a recent survey that North, they did in North America, right? And they said that there's this campaign that took place in Canada and there's one that took place in the US. And the fact that, you know, I'm going to speak for us that's in the US today. And it says that in the US, it says that the picture is even gloomier for us, right? So we're in worse shape than Canada. It said that 33% or more than 77 million Americans don't pay their bills on time. It says that 39% carry credit card debt from month to month and only 59% of adults say they have savings. It even go on and says that worse, more than half now think it's acceptable to default their mortgage if they can't afford to pay it. So because of this is why we looked and we said we had to do something about this. We launched our campaign so that way we could fit some of these, we could fix some of these issues that families are facing. My question to you is, Who's helping your friends, your family, your coworkers, and your loved ones with some of these concerns? Or better yet, who's doing it for free? Who's doing it for free? Who's sitting down with you and educating you about finance? That's where our campaign comes in and play a major role. So now, let me tell you what is our intention when we sit down with every family. Our intention for every family that we sit down with and we talk about financial concepts and tell them about our national campaign our goal as your financial literacy um, coach or your educator, all we're trying to do is help you learn how to make money. Once you identify how to make more money, we're trying to show you how to save that money. And once you start saving that money, our goal is to help you learn how you can grow the money. And ultimately, when you grow that money, we're going to teach you also how to protect the money. That's what we're trying to do. That's what we're trying to inform you on how to do that. But the first thing you gotta understand is that you gotta learn how to create a financial foundation, right? And creating a financial foundation is like building a house and you start with a solid financial foundation and you build it from the ground up. This is how you start building your financial foundation. So one of the things that you gotta understand that, well, what is the first thing you gotta put in place when you're creating a financial foundation? You gotta put in place proper protection, right? Now, let me tell you what I mean by this. First thing you gotta do is that you gotta have proper, protect, um, proper, proper protection in the event of disability, if you have health problems or premature death. You gotta have all the right protection in place. We're gonna teach you about that. The next thing we're gonna teach you is debt management. We're also gonna let you understand that you need to reduce your debt and show you how to get out of the debt. And we'll teach you different concepts that how to do that as well without even going through consolidations. The next thing is an emergency fund. Did you know that you need to set aside at least three to six months of your income to deal with sudden changes in your job, your career, your business, or unforeseen repairs that may uh, pop up in your life, right? If you don't put all these things in place, then you can't get to the fourth step, which is investment. Because you should actually save and invest for the long run. All these tasks should be taken care of as soon as possible, right? All of them should be taken care of as soon as possible. So when you think about it, you should consider protection first, right? And I'll tell you why. The reason why is that if you try to save hundreds of dollars a month by and, and don't even have any insurance, right? Or even long-term care or these different things, guess what? When you actually get sick, disabled, or die, the savings won't last very long, right? The savings won't last very long because you didn't put the right protection in place. Likewise, if you have an emergency fund, if you if you have an emergency, but the money is tied up with some investment, how would you deal with the sudden unexpected expenses? You may have to get into more debt, right? And then pretty much that's why when we sit down with families, we teach them about how to create a financial foundation and learn how to put together all of these things step by step. The next thing that we want to teach families is this. We're going to teach families how to understand how money works, right? You gotta understand how money works by learning what's called the wealth formula. Once you take the time to learn what's called the wealth formula, you will then understand the idea of how to build wealth. Building wealth is not like growing money on a tree, all right? Money doesn't grow on a tree. Being wealthy is not gonna happen by accident unless you win the lotto, which is, <laughs> your odds is very thin of that one. 
My thing is, you got to understand how money works. Every family we sit down with, we spend time so they can understand how to build wealth. So that way they learn about how to use the formula. The formula says that you need money plus time plus or minus rate of return minus inflation minus tax equals wealth. This is the wealth formula. So one of the things that we understand that we got to sit down with families and have money talks and explain to them what is the wealth formula, right? You got to explain to people what is the wealth formula so that way they could understand for themselves. My job is not to be your financial advisor. My job is not to be your guru. My job is to make you know as much as me and be in a position where you can understand. I'm just here to educate you. So that way you can make educational decisions moving forward. So that way people stop selling to you. Because that's what's happening to you. Too many people have the opportunity to sell to you. And you don't know how to defend yourself because everything sounds so good the way they say it. But if you don't understand concepts of wealth building, you will never understand the products that you're going to buy until it's too late. So when you look at it, you see the money talk. It says, where is the money? Right? Tomorrow is Friday. A lot of you guys probably already, money is already counted for. It says a good number of people always seem to have money problems. It said most of the time they're strong on funds. And that's why Warren Buffett advises, don't save what is left after spending, but spend what is left after saving. How many of us actually spend first and then say, I'm going to save afterwards? Well, you should be doing the opposite. You just got to save first and then spend what is left after you save. Because you got to plan for the future. So when you think about the money formula, the wealth formula, right? And it talks about money. That's why a lot of people always look at me and say, Kian, I, I don't know where to find the money or how much should I save? Should I save 300, 400 bucks? It's not so much particularly of the amount, but it's amount of the percentage based upon what you earn. So if we turn to page eight in our Saving the Future book, it tells you what is it that you gotta do. You gotta pay yourself first. You gotta pay yourself first. Let me tell you what you got to save. You got to set aside 5 to 10% of your income and save for the future. If possible, save 15% or more. You got to treat it like a bill that you must pay and pay that first because that's your family's financial bill. Doesn't it make sense to pay your family first before you pay other people's bills? Is your cable TV more important than your family's financial well-being? Is having Netflix, is having cable, is having the newest gadgets more important than your financial well-being? So that's the reason why you got to learn how to make these small changes. And we teach families how to make small changes so that way they can have big money in the future. You see, spending is a habit, but so is saving. What if you can make small changes to your spending habits and start saving $10 a day? Did you know that's $300 a month? If you was able to save $300 a month for the next 30 years and just receive 8% interest on that money, you would have $447 plus thousand dollars. Did you hear me? What if you was able to save $20 a day, $600 a month for the next 30 years, and you only got 8% interest on that money? Did you know you would have over $894 plus thousand dollars? You see, you got to understand that building wealth requires you to start paying yourself first. You pay everybody else at the end of the month. You pay everybody during the week. When are you going to pay you? Because the pay you pay yourself today is the one that will save you later when you get ready to retire. That's the reason why you got to pay yourself first. Now, the next thing on the wealth form, it talks about time, right? It talks about time. Now, here's the thing that you got to understand about time. Time is money. Time is money. So listen to this. The sooner you save, the better for your future, right? The sooner you save, the better you it will be for your future. See, procrastination is the enemy of saving. When many people are young, right, they think they have a lot of time to save. That's what a lot of people think. So here's the thing. What if you don't have a lot of time anymore? What if you're not a young person? How can you catch up with time? Well, you got to learn something on page 11. That's called the rate of return, the magic of compound interest. Now, this is one of the most important discovery in finance, which is also known as the rule of 72, which pretty much shows you how to calculate the effect that compound interest with very simple formula. You see, what the rule of 72 said is this. 
If you take 72, you divide it by the interest, the rate of return or the interest you're getting on your money, right? If you take the rule of 72, the rule of 72 said if you take that interest, right? You take 72 divided by the interest you're getting on your money, that, that will show you the amount of years it takes for your money to double for you and also against you, right? So that's something important for you to learn, which is the rule of 72. Anything that is pertaining to interest, right? Or anything that you take out like a loan, your car note, your mortgage, right? Your student loan, all these things, anything that you have that pertain the word interest on it, you got to use the rule of 72 to find out when would this interest double for me as far as even the investment or double against me if you borrowed money, all right? It is very important. Now, the next thing um, is on page 14, which is known as inflation. This is a negative in your uh, wealth formula. And the reason why inflation is a negative is because it's a silent killer. Did you know that inflation is the rise in price in goods and services over time? Did you know that inflation is pretty much when the prices increase or purchasing power decreases? Did you know, for example, let's say that inflation rate was at 3.5%. That means your $100 today will only be worth $96.50 the next year. Did you know that inflation happens when a country prints more money than it actually earns? And the result is that everybody will lose some value off their money? Did you know that some people refer to inflation as the hidden tax? You see, inflation is a major factor to consider when you're building up your financial future. For instance, if you put money in an account with a zero rate of return, it, it will certainly decline in the long run. And if you look at the last 100 years from 1914 to 2014, the U.S. inflation rate have averaged at 3.32%. So let's just say that you plan to retire with $4,000 coming into you per month in today's value. Did you know that 20 years later at a 3%, not a 3.2, but at a 3% inflation rate, you will need to have $7,224 in order for you to enjoy that same monthly purchasing power every month. This is the power of understanding inflation and the reason why saving more is so important. So one of the other things that's in the wealth form is that you got to understand the concept and the idea of taxes because it's also a negative. Now taxes is a, it's almost like a double-edged sword because it could work for you and against you. So in our wealth formula, this is also known as a negative, right? Because remember, money plus time plus or minus rate of return minus inflation minus tax equal wealth. Now let's break it down in taxes now. The thing that I like to tell you, and the thing is, hey Jason, what's going on, brother? The thing about taxes is this. You gotta understand that if you take the time to understand taxes, you will know where to put your own money. I kid you not. If you take the time to understand taxes, you will know where to put your own money. And let me tell you what I mean by this. Did you know there's three ways Three ways your money get taxed when you need it. Three ways. And the three ways is that you get taxed now, you get taxed later, and you get tax advantages. Now, let me tell you about the first two, and then we're going to get into the last one. Did you know that 85% of the population put their money in tax now? Tax now vehicles are vehicles where you put your money. It's in your checking account, savings account, CD, stocks, and mutual funds. 85% of the population put their money there. And then you have 10% of the population that use tax later vehicles, which is in their 401ks, 403bs, um, IRAs, set IRAs, annuities, and pensions. And then you have about 5% of the population, 5%, that actually use tax advantage, which is in their Roth IRA, their 529 college savings plan, municipal bonds, health savings account, life insurance, long-term care benefits. All of these vehicles give you tax advantages. But one of the things that happened is that many people didn't understand what that means. So when you turn to page 18 in your Saving Your Future book, it talks about that. It talks about what tax now mean, where 85% of the population put their money. Did you know that 85% of the population use what's known as tax now vehicles? Now, tax now means that any earnings from these accounts must pay tax for that year. For example, you must report and pay tax on the earnings from your savings account, certificates of deposits, which are known as CDs, 
dividends from your stocks, mutual funds, and money market funds. You have to report and pay taxes on any gains inside of these policies. Those are known as capital gains. Also, they were 10% of the population put their money in these tax later vehicles. Now, tax later money is pretty much money that you is called pre-tax. Pre-tax money is money that you deposit in an account and it's money that you have not yet paid income tax on but you'll definitely be paying taxes on it later when you withdraw it did you know that these accounts are also called tax deferred and in the u.s um these accounts commonly take the form of like your iras 401ks 403bs and so on now here's something else that you got to understand right did you know that in the u.s in the U in the u.s when you begin to take your money out after 59 and a half You'll be taxed as ordinary income. Did you know that? Um, but if you take the money out before 59 and a half, you will get a 10% penalty with a few exceptions. In addition to paying taxes as well. Also, you can't keep your money there forever because you got to start withdrawing it when you reach 70 and a half or you're going to pay a 50% penalty. And the reason why you pay that 50% penalty is because you failed to take out what is known as the required minimum distribution. These are things that we must understand and learn. Now, why does 5% of the population understand tax advantages? Now, you let me know if you understood this. Did you know that tax advantages mean that you generally won't pay tax when you withdraw the money from your account? Did you know that tax advantage investment money is after tax money because you have already paid taxes on it? Did you know things like your Roth IRA, your 529 college savings plan, TFSA, life insurance are popular investment vehicles that get tax exempt distribution. Did you know that? Right? These are things that is important for us to learn and understand. So when it all comes down to it, like I said, if you understood taxes, you would know where to put your own money. My question to you is, how do you want to be taxing your own retirement now that you understand the three ways your money will be taxed when you need it? So now let's turn to page 21. I just want to wrap up everything here. Based upon everything that I just shared with you, your question is probably still, Keon, can I build wealth? Yes, you can, if you understand how to follow the formula, right? So at the end of the day, retirement, savings, and wealth building is a pretty much a numbers game. It is a numbers game, guys. You just got to know the number. So one of the things that you got to understand is that money, when we said the word money in, in, in the formula, what we're trying to say, what we're trying to encourage you to do is to spend less, save more. When it comes to time, all we're trying to say is that invest your money long enough to allow the interest to compound and for wealth to potentially build up. When we talk about the rate of return, the rate of return is very important because what kind of interest are you getting on your money or better yet, what is the real rate of return? And then inflation. Your money must be earning a rate of return higher than the than what inflation is. So is the interest on your money higher than what inflation is? And then tax. You got to look at for investments that actually give you tax advantages. Now that you understand what tax advantage really means. So when we say wealth, it's number six. The result is your wealth, your future retirement. See, many people understand these concepts and work on it and you can do it too. But you gotta spend the time to learn about finance. See, it's not that hard, it's not that complicated. So one of the things that I do when I sit down with a family, and I wanna do this with you guys, I wanna I want give you an idea to know where you are within your finances. And it's a simple quiz. It's literally four questions I gotta ask you. Well, when you're building your financial future and making your financial decisions, guys, you're making decisions. You should ask yourself these questions or ask the person that is offering you some form of solution, some form of product, these questions. Hey person or me or wherever you're putting your money right now, can you answer yes, yes to these questions? Number one, wherever you're saving your money or investing right now, can it potentially grow to achieve your goals? Say yes or no. Number two, is it safe enough? Meaning that if the market fluctuate tomorrow and go down on a negative, will your money be affected? Number three, does it have tax advantages? Now that you understand what tax advantage is. And number four, does it have proper protection? 
Can you answer yes to all three or uh, four of these questions? If you are, you're likely on the right track to build a financial, a great financial foundation. But what if you can't? That's the reason why we sit down with families and teach them finance one on one. So the last thing I'm going to leave you with is something called a formula 1020. Now, knowing what you need is so important, especially when it comes to retirement or even insurance need that you want to put in place. Now, a recent article in the Financial Analysis Journal suggests that Americans need to save more, not just a little more, but vastly more. Did you know to be assured of having enough money for a comfortable retirement, they advise you to have at least 22 times your annual income for your retirement? Thus, if you make about $50,000 a year, you will actually need to have at least $1.1 million. Did you know that many people today will live long lives up to the age of 100 and the need may be much bigger than normally thought? Did you know as for protection for your family? As for protection for your family, many professionals like myself suggest that you need to have at least 20 to, 20 to um, at least 10 times your income in place um, as far as insurance coverage. Just to give you an example, right? If you make about $50,000 a year, 10 times $50,000 a year, you need to have at least $500,000 insurance coverage. This amount of money will allow your, your, your surviving spouse right, or partner to have enough money to actually take care of the children for the next 10 years or more. So pretty much what the 1020 formula is, is that if you die too soon, you need to have 10 times your income in place. But what if you live too long? You're going to need at least 20 times your income in order to retire comfortably. And that's only if you retire at 65 years old, due to the fact that the average person lived to about an age one, um, 85 years old, but people are living way longer than that in today's day. So that's the reason why we invite people to come down to our workshops. We provide five workshops within our national campaign. And just to show you here uh, what the workshop is all about, for everybody that comes to our workshop, we give them access to have access to one of these books. And one of these books is our workshop books, right? And in our national, uh, in our workshop, our educational program, you're gonna come here and learn. Now, what is it that you're going to learn? Well, the first thing we're going to ask you is, is money controlling you or do you control money? Because with our financial foundation and educational program, you will learn the following things. You're going to learn how to make money work better for you. You're going to find, uh, find and save more money. You're going to understand investments and how to build wealth. You're going to learn how to protect and preserve your money. You see, you can become your own money manager and you can actually build habits that successful people have obtained over these years. So one of the things that, let me tell you about the five workshops that we provide to the community. Workshop one, we're going to teach you how to increase your cash flow and how to manage your debt. And workshop two, we're going to teach you how to build a strong financial foundation and put together proper protection for you and your family. Workshop three, you're going to learn about how to build in wealth and how asset accumulation happens. In workshop four, you're going to learn about retirement planning and wealth preservation. In workshop five, you even learn how to build a business in the financial industry. So my friends, what is it that we're going to do for you at the end of the day? It's four things we're going to help you to learn. And it's four things your money needs when it comes to investing and saving. Your money needs to be in a position where it could grow. Your money also needs to be in a position where it's safe. Your money also will be in a position where it gives you protection. And your money has to be in a position where it gets tax advantages. My friend, that's what we do for families. And that's why we invite you to come down every Tuesday and Thursday to one of our workshops at 7 p.m. at the East Orange Financial Learning Center. And if you're not in the East Orange location nor in New Jersey, we have centers all throughout North America and Canada. All you gotta do is get in touch with us. Even Hawaii, we have centers over there. And we're on this big national campaign because we have to educate a million families by the year 2020. If you wanna come down and learn more about our campaign and you're interested in becoming a campaigner with us, we have our campaigners orientations every Monday, every Monday at 7 p.m. and also every Saturday at 12 p.m. Come on down, come on down and come and learn. So that way you could be in a position to protect your family and learn how to manage your own wealth. Our goal is to make you a very powerful person so that way you could know how to make the right decisions that you and your family need you to make. Our goal is here to empower you. We want to empower you so that way you can make better money decisions. So my name is Keon Corniff. I appreciate you all. Come on down at 7 Glenwood Avenue in East Orange, New Jersey. 
Once again, 7 Glenwood Avenue in East Orange, New Jersey. We're on the fourth floor. All right, come on down. We want to educate you, we want to teach you. Always remember that you're one decision away from changing your future for the better, but always remember the choice is always yours. My name is Keon Corniff, also known as Mr. Finance, your favorite financial educator, and I look forward to talking to you guys. I hope to see you guys at the next one. See you guys at the top, all right? Much love, God bless.